Harrison. He's the curator and he's here today to tell us all about this amazing 1929 Ruxton. 29 Ruxton, the year of the stock market crash, and they were still building cars like this. It's one of the very rare front wheel drive American made cars prior to World War II. Um, right now, it's hard to get a car that's front wheel drive, but back then it was a totally, totally new technology that they're working with. It's got a straight eight engine, and because it's front wheel drive, it can be so low that it doesn't need a drive shaft to go under the passenger compartment. You can keep everything way, way low to the ground. It doesn't even need running boards, it's so low. And the color, I think most people notice right away, it's actually correct for the era. Uh, most people think that that could not possibly be the case, but they did have these kinds of pastels, these kinds of uh, lavenders and violets in the day, uh, at perfectly correct for the style of the era. And I think it's interesting, it seems to have attracted the attention of the judges. <laughs> it certainly seems to, and we're very honored. My dad is the chairman of transportation design at Art Center and a judge here today at the sixth annual Palm Springs Desert Concourse. And we're actually working right now, so, so I, I'll let you go. I can just say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Mercedes-Benz. This car was actually built three years before the merger. It uses a 7.2 liter straight six engine with a single overhead camshaft that, that, that actuates four valves per cylinder. It's one of the very rare short wheelbase uh, versions of the car. Most of them were long, suitable for touring coach work or for formal uh, closed coach work or for limousine and town cars. Um, it's named after the Targa Florio uh, race because cars that were very similar to this, uh, supercharged cars, were actually quite successful at that. Well, it so looks like we uh, won joke. best in class and we're beyond thrilled. It's an honor to, to, to win anything and to be best in class. It's, it's, we're delighted. you might win if you're a top producer for Mary Kay Cosmetics, but you're not quite. But I, why don't you give the remote to uh, uh, to Leslie and let him tell a little bit about the car. Leslie, go, let me give you the mic here and tell us a little bit about little the bit, car. Yeah. Uh, this 1929 Ruxton, one of America's first front-wheel drive cars. I mean, every car today is front-wheel drive, but you know, it really had to start somewhere. It's got a 100 horsepower straight-eight engine uh, and Ruxton didn't have its own uh, factory, so they were built at the Moon plant in um, 
St. Louis and at the Kissel plant in uh, Hartford. So we got a pretty rare car here, one of only four Ruxton Roadsters known to survive. And I like to point out that the color is correct for the era. The color is absolutely correct for the era. It's kind of doubtful that many cars were painted this color, but they certainly could have been. Thank you, Leslie, and the Peterson Museum for bringing the car. Again, if you want to see more cars like this one, very unusual, very exotic, visit the Peterson Museum in Los Angeles. It's right on Museum Row. We were, we were talking here about the cars behind me, you know, and, and the judging process that we go through here. And of course, with a lot of these cars, you know, we have class judges that are extremely knowledgeable about the history, the details. You know, Leslie spoke about this Mercedes-Benz well and, and explained the Ruxton as well. And he knows far more than I will ever know about these cars. But looking at these cars as a designer, I can tell you that, you know, we pay close attention to changes in vehicle architecture, things that dramatically affected the way we design cars. And these two cars illustrate something quite interesting. You know, the Mercedes-Benz is the very traditional architecture, front engine, rear drive, the body on top of the frame. And if you look at the Ruxton, behind it, it was really a transition to a dramatically new way to organize the car, to have front wheel drive uh, and not have the drivetrain going beneath the occupants, so the, the whole passenger area is lower, the car is much lower. And so, you know, we, we, we think about the, the way that most of the Concours events around the world judge the cars. You know, you look for authenticity, you look for uh, accuracy of the details, you know, perfection. And, and oftentimes we as designers look at the judging process and, and we notice that, you know, the judging uh, sheets, typically a 100-point scoring sheet, looks for deductions, finding flaws. And as designers, we actually don't look at cars that way. We come at cars looking for what's notable or interesting or, you know, maybe was a, an, another step in the vehicle architecture and uh, whether the car is dramatic and, and beautiful. That's what really counts to us as designers. So maybe in some ways, when we're here as honorary judges, we counterbalance the conversation a little bit. Um, this makes these two cars from the Peterson to me particularly interesting in, a, in terms of a, of a step in a design direction. When all the judges came through and kind of swarmed around the Ruxton, what was the discussion at that point? Oh, what we were doing there was we had, uh, we, we went through after we turned in our scoring from each of the different groups uh, judging teams had. Then we took the best one from each of those groups, put those forth and had some uh, uh, you know, great discussion in the judging room about the, the winner in each of the categories and we brought forth the ones that we felt were worthy of best in show and then we came out on the field as a big group and, and went around to each of those candidates for best of show so and then looked at the scoring you know looked at the comments and and you know cars that um, really do have the qualities of being not only beautifully restored you know significant cars maybe an important history or story about it but but also uh, uh, accurate and correct and, and then honorary judges like myself and Freeman and Frank who are here make sure there's discussion too about the design merit of that car you know that it, that it really is something uh, profound or exceptional or beautiful so. thank you mm -hmm.